The film digital system includes a film transfer lens with spacer rings and adapter and an LED set with lighting. It may also include a projector modified by film digital to run at 16 and two-thirds instead of 18 frames per second. There is a fine speed control for the exact regulation of the speed. But if you use a camera with a freely adjustable shutter speed, for example from Blackmagic or from Panasonic, then you can also work with a non-converted projector at 18 frames per second. And that's what we're going to show today. We have here the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, which, for an affordable price, offers all the possibilities that are important for film transfer. It's also available at www.filmdigital.com in a bundle along with an LED set and film transfer optics. The camera can shoot in ProRes or RAW and also record the Super 8 transfer in 4K. I'll take the lid off for now. The original lamp is removed and I'll put the cable aside here. Here, I have an LED set with flying lead because I'm not using a film digital projector here at the moment. With the projectors that film digital sells, the wire is built into the projector and the DMX cable that can be connected to the back of the projector housing. Up here is the power button and below that is a toggle switch. When the blue light is on, you can then adjust the brightness in small increments. And when orange is lit, then you can adjust the color temperature to be more bluish or more yellowish. There are two memory locations for the settings. You don't have to pay attention to the right side. The LED can easily be mounted in the bracket of the original projector lamp. It's then secured with the existing wires. Now to the lens. I first put in a film that I know was shot in focus. I removed the original lens and I also removed the spring from the lens shaft. There are either two screws on the front of the lens shaft or just one, which is under the original focus knob. In that case, you just have to pull the focus knob off first and unscrew the bracket underneath. Then you can insert the threaded screw that Film Digital supplies. Of course, you must not screw it in too deep so that the optics can move freely at first. Now I look into the lens shaft to see if perhaps the blade shutter is in the way and hides the image, but this is not the case. If that should be the case, there's a single frame transport button on the Bauer Studio projectors. The optics have an orange fine focus and a flexible C-mount ring to center the image. I only need rubber rings if the optics otherwise have a little too much play in the shaft. The first thing I do now is connect the lens to the camera, in this case via an included micro four-thirds adapter. Depending on the sensor size, one or more spacer rings are placed between the lens and the adapter to achieve the correct image size. The more or longer distance rings, the larger the image. We check if the orange focus ring can be turned freely in both directions and is not at the stop. But now we first set the rough focus by moving the optics in and out of the shaft. Once the image is reasonably sharp, we carefully tighten the grub screw in the lens shaft with an Allen key and of course the screws in the front as well if there are any. Before we make further adjustments, it's advantageous to set the framer of the Super 8 projector to about center. Then we have room to move up and down afterwards. Next, we align the image in the center of the camera monitor. I again use an Allen key to loosen two of the four screws on the C-mount ring so that I can then move the camera freely up, down, right or left and then I tighten the screws again. Just at the end, I adjust the fine focus on the orange ring until the film grain is as sharp as possible. It's best to use the camera's magnification function for this. The orange focus ring does not necessarily have to be fixed. 
Now let's move on to the camera settings. We first decide on the ProRes 422 file format and a frame rate of 25. The files generated are about 4 gigabytes per minute in 4K. Now we set the shutter speed to 1 54th of a second. Even if I use a black magic, it's obviously important not to use more ISO than necessary. That's why we do an ISO test run with about half of the lighting level. With this film, we decide to use 400 ISO after that. We then control the nuances of the lighting on the fly with the LED set. For the color temperature, as a basis, we first set the white balance of the camera to sun or outdoor, and we won't change this setting. The fine details of the color temperature we regulate during the shooting with the LED set. And now to the projector. For threading, always take the first switch option, 1 o'clock, on the Bauer brand. Remember to switch to 3 o'clock before playing, otherwise the image will be unsteady. Please always make sure to use white start tape if possible and to cut the beginning of the film or punch it with a clipper. To get a proper overscan, that is, really not to cut anything, you can expand the film gate yourself on all electronically controlled projectors. First, turn off the power and then select the leftmost switch position to carefully remove the film gate. You can remove this small cover frame with a cutter, for example. This way, you'll have more film area. During the transfer, bad splices can cause the framer to jump up or down. Correct the offset of the frame with the original framer knob of the projector. It can also happen that the film jumps out of the gripper, for example, due to perforation damage, which can be heard and seen immediately. Pressing the correction button helps here. As post-processing, only the vertical mirroring has to be done unless you've already mirrored during the transfer with a suitable hardware such as Cross Converter from Decimator Design. If you'd like to have the digitization with the Film Digital System explained to you once again in detail and individually, simply register for the free live webinar at www.filmdigital.com.